Welcome to Forward Theater and the world premiere production of Lauren Gunderson's Artemisia. I'm Marcella Kearns, Artistic Associate here at Forward, and today I'll be your guide behind the scenes. Artemisia is Forward's offering to World Premiere Wisconsin, a statewide festival of plays and musicals running from March through June of this year. If you're already a World Premiere Wisconsin fan, make sure to check in on your passport while you're here, whether you're going in person or digitally. If you're new to World Premiere Wisconsin, if you don't know anything about it yet, you'll see information about this celebration of new work, both in your program and in literature in the hallway in the Playhouse, if you're going in person. We're particularly proud that World Premiere Wisconsin is locally grown the brainchild of artistic director Jen Uphoff Gray, and a labor of love under the leadership of Forward, Northern Sky, and the Milwaukee Rep. Madison has a strong representation in world premiere Wisconsin. We hope that you'll see as many productions as you can and are so glad that you're joining us for our own world premiere. Uh, by the way, if you are checking out our WPW table, if you're going in person, take a survey about your theater going and help all of our colleagues learn more about our patrons in Wisconsin and elsewhere. Let's get started. So I, I would love to share a little bit about Lauren Gunderson and her connection to Forward Theater. She's no stranger to our stage. In fact, in a recent interview with the Cap Times, she called us a second home. Very, very touching. Thank you, Lauren. Ford first introduced her to our stages via Silent Sky in 2015, another story illuminating invisible history, that of Henrietta Swan Levitt, whose astronomical work gave us the tools to understand the size of the universe. The two-hander, I and you, was next on our stage, a tale of connection between two high school students studying Walt Whitman. On April 20th, 2018, three theaters in Wisconsin, forward among them, along with theaters all over the United States, held a reading of Lauren Gunderson's Natural Shocks to raise awareness about gun and domestic violence. Ford's reading was held to benefit the Wisconsin anti-violence effort. So Artemisia is actually our fourth foray with Gunderson's work and our third full production. Lauren is a playwright, screenwriter, and short story writer from Atlanta, Georgia. She is one of the most produced playwrights in America. This is according to American Theater Magazine since 2015, topping the list three times since, uh, including in 2022, 2023. Now, this is a list that pulls Shakespeare out of the mix, who kind of upends that figure, uh, but it's pretty prestigious to be up on that list. She's a two-time winner of the Steinberg Award for I and You and the Book of Will and the winner of the Lanford Wilson Award and the Otis Guernsey New Voices Award, among many other achievements. She studied Southern literature and drama at Emory University, and she earned her MFA in dramatic writing at NYU's Tisch School. Her play, The Catastrophist, about her husband, virologist Nathan Wolf, premiered digitally in January 2021. We all know what the digital work was like, so you might have seen it or read about it. Uh, among her other occupations, she also writes the books for musicals. One recent work I'd like to mention is with Dave Stewart and Joss Stone on The Time Traveler's Wife. She is also a board member of the Playwrights Foundation. Now, how was our collaboration with Lauren Gunderson conceived? Within a few weeks of cooking up world premiere Wisconsin, Jen remembers reaching out to Lauren and saying simply, I want to put this together and I want to commission you. Lauren herself refers to the trust inherent in the theaters asking a playwright to write for them. So for both Ford and Lauren, it feels like a wonderfully... Um, rich benefit and mutual, mutual, exciting adventure. Jen reached out to Lauren and wanted to approach her with two thoughts. She wanted to ask her first, what kinds of plays or what kind of play do you want to write for us? 
And then without wanting to ask a leading question, Jen had in the back of her mind, having just read an article in the New Yorker about Artemisia Gentileschi, 17th century uh, Italian Baroque painter. She was really intrigued by this painter uh, previously unknown to her. Um, when they spoke serendipitously, Lauren said she just read an article in the New Yorker about Artemisia Gentileschi. So Jen naturally said done and we were off to the races. Now, if you don't know who Artemisia is, here's a primer. She uh, was one of the most celebrated painters in the 17th century. She was born in 1593 in Rome, so just as Shakespeare's career was taking off, and she died in Naples in 1653. Her father, Orazio Gentileschi, also a painter, taught her, and she was producing competitive work by the time she was a teenager. Both she and her father were influenced by the muscular work of Caravaggio and the technique of chiaroscuro. Artemisia herself became famous for her paintings of women and was known in particular for doing really good work on hands. Hands will become a very significant uh, element of this play. In Lauren's play about her, you'll get a very intimate take on her life and events with which she contended in order to establish herself. Over the course of time, Artemisia lost some visibility, but over the last few decades, she's really enjoyed a resurgence of popularity. A few years ago, the National Gallery in England featured an extensive exhibition of her work. Uh, you can check out some talks on that and articles on YouTube, on the internet. I think Smithsonian Magazine had a very good article about it. Uh, even within the last year, the New York Times and uh, other news sources have featured articles about discoveries of her paintings, uh, the latest in Beirut, I believe. So her work is even now continuously, continually being discovered. In looking at themes and potential topics to explore within the season and the range of plays that Ford has undertaken, Artemisia became an opportunity as well to tell a more mature female love story. We don't get nearly enough of that on stage, Jen remarked at a meeting early in our season. There's so little good romance written for the stage. Artemisia offers romance indeed, but I'm also happy to share more of what we mind as we embarked on this story with our playwright. So a little bit about our rehearsal process and the process of a world premiere. I'd say Jen might begin with this. When you're doing a new play, there's a lot of energy built towards the playwright. As director of the piece, she was really conscious of supporting Lauren as we birthed this play. We began our process last year during Wisconsin Rights when Lauren joined a reading team to workshop and to develop her initial drafts of the play. She was fine tuning the script for first rehearsal even up through a few months ago. Artemisia then enjoyed an extra week of rehearsal so that the artistic team could work in the room with Lauren in order to dissect and finesse the first rehearsal script. Revisions and some new pages came out the first week, and some of the most recent changes actually occurred during technical and final dress rehearsals our opening week. I'd like to give you a glimpse of the inner workings of this part of the process and am deeply indebted to our assistant director, Samantha Martinson, for sharing the work in the rehearsal hall. These are her own words, her own observations. One of the things I found inspirational, says Samantha, was Lauren's collaborative nature. She definitely comes into the room with a vision of the story she wants to tell, but trusts the actors to find the rhythm and cadence of the language and uses their expertise to be able to hear the story and to determine if it's resonating in the way she wants it to. She said, we spent a lot of time listening to specific pages to see if the cadence of the conversation flowed or if it needed adjustment. She's definitely a playwright who says, and this is a quote, if we can say it in fewer words, let's say it in fewer words so we can earn the time when we say a lot of words together. So the layout of the first week. The 
team spent the first day doing an initial read through and design presentations with staff, designers, of course, and other members of the Ford family present. Once the wider group dispersed, the acting, stage management, and the directing team dug in with Lauren. They discussed some of the discoveries actors were having already, learned some of the backstory and history around Artemisia, and looked at paintings referred to in the play. Uh, if you do go in person, feel free to take a look at those paintings on the board. They'll be up in the rotunda. Over the next few days, the team then proceeded scene by scene, stopping to have an extended discussion after each scene about characterization, history, motivation, context, uh, the paintings Artemisia was working on at the time, and the paintings that influenced the transition between scenes. They spent a lot of time engaging with Lauren's reasoning and understanding of the characters. This then allowed actors to engage in the characters in a different way and really was mutually beneficial, I think, to the development of the work. So if Lauren decided she wanted to do a rewrite, they had the full scope of what she was aiming for and could address what felt aligned and what still raised questions as they were working within the bodies of the characters themselves and seeing them from one particular lens as opposed to Lauren and Jen seeing it from a total picture. Between the second and third day of rehearsal then, Lauren actually started rewriting parts of the first third or so of the play. By the fourth day, the team did a rereading of new pages and continued that way through the end of the work. After Lauren departed, after the first week, the company then rehearsed the production with the same amount of time as a regular Ford rehearsal process. Tuesday of opening week, a few days before our preview, Lauren returned to Madison to attend technical rehearsals and to check in with the team. After watching a run through on Tuesday night, Jen, Lauren, and our assistant director, Samantha, sat down to discuss details about interpretation, rehearsal choices, and the flow of the script in relation to pace and action. One change made opening week, actually, though I'm not going to spoil what that is, has tightened the story and increased the stakes of a particular moment. In fact, increased a real inciting incident. Lines were even altered the day of our preview. I'd like to shift from our actors now to our designers, as long as we're speaking about technical rehearsals and the whole world building of the play. Our design team is composed actually of many artists who really helped build Ford. Scott Rote, Chris Dunham, Joe Serqua, Noel Stolmack, Pam Miles. It's, it's a marvelous collection of folks who have been with us for a very long time. To give you a sense of their contributions, you'll see and hear in the performance, I'd like to share how they described their process actually at first rehearsal. So first, Chris, our scenic designer, started his work by researching and viewing how painters in the 17th century painted their studios. Some objects and visuals in these paintings, in other words, were there simply to show off the artist's technique. For instance, uh, Chris mentioned a shelf over a door, which gave a place for showing off items they wished to depict. Uh, basically, he said the evening of preview, artists usually just had a lot of stuff hanging around in their studio. Um, curtains were in a lot of the paintings. People showed off draperies, demonstrating their mastery of the fold, how real they could make it look. You will actually be able to get a glimpse of the artist herself demonstrating technique. So listen for Artemisia saying of one of her paintings that she was just showing off. The studio space Chris was uh, intent on uh, asserting was also, of course, functional. In other words, so no matter where you were, your art space was your art space. So for the production, which changes locations, he said, we were looking at how to make simple modifications in space to show how locations moved, but ultimately it's all a studio. One key notion was how Artemisia 
puts her stories into the paintings. To her, um, the story of whatever event she's depicting, the detail of the story is really what resonates. So we wanted to find a way in which to create spaces in which for the patrons, for our audiences, a painting could ultimately be made of anything, anytime. You could do a painting of each scene. Uh, Jen added at this point that the goal was really to create a frame. Each location, each city, we wanted the play to help us feel out where we were. And we wanted to the audience, we wanted the audience, excuse me, to feel as though at some point they may be viewing framed a scene from this intimate story. Pamela Miles, our props master, had a deep hand in how you'll see or not see Artemisia, Artemisia's art on canvas. She really looked hard to find materials that could serve as materials which painters may have used. Uh, finally, Pam actually landed on pigment as the best prop for pigment. Um, tools like the mall stick, which a painter and consultant shared with us, is really necessary for realism. And particular kinds of brushes for the work itself. This is the level of detail at which we wished to work, even as we know we're building a fictional space with actors who are not themselves Baroque painters. Noel, our lighting designer, shared both her inspiration and her technical task at first rehearsal. She said she and Jen started their discussion about lighting via how to work with the transitions between scenes which ultimately very often shifted locations, but also sometimes leapt forward in time. As a component, she said, we wish to establish the directionality of light in each location. So actually you'll be noticing a brush stroke of light. You'll be noticing in transitions, uh, be prepared, she said, for them to take a while. Uh, you'll notice one of these transitions that Artemisia um, will very often be looking for a light source. A shaft of light will then dictate how the scene, how each studio is set up in each new location. Um, Noel also really wanted to say that she appreciated Jen for recognizing that this is her style. It's really a hallmark of her work. Uh, in other words, among Chris's work, Jen's, Noel's, um, Pam's via props to what we're really looking to see in some ways is something that could itself look like a Baroque Italian art. So there's a little bit of a sense of chiaroscuro in the lighting itself. So um, as for different cities, actually, Noel shared that the playwright herself really gives us quality of light in terms of color and texture. So they really looked carefully at angle and direction and covered um, thereby a long expanse of time in the play. Uh, one element of the piece that you'll see come into play, which interfaces both with scenic and light and design, is projection. More to come about this element of the visual in the play. On to Scott Rote, costume designer. He actually knew uh, about Artemisia when many didn't. I myself did not know. Uh, I, I knew some of her paintings, but I didn't know about her life or about the extent of her body of work until uh, I dove into this play myself. But he did. He said he had remembered seeing a French film about her from the 1990s, whose design really tried to reflect the chiaroscuro of her own work. Um, I will say beware, the film, if you seek it out, is actually quite inaccurate in terms of her biography. Um, so definitely take uh, check it out. Check out its cinematography for the fiction. Um, Scott himself was captivated by color and texture and trying to bring the colors of her paintings onto the stage. So uh, Artemisia, he says, has quite a lot of gold and yellow in her work. So we're making that color prominent in her own coloring. She is indeed played by two actresses. So you'll see that comparison there. Um, Francesco, Artemisia's lover, has deep burgundies with lots of gold touches as a parallel there. 
The Queen of England is in teal. Uh, as an example, Prudencia, Artemisia's daughter, has really similar colors as she with some lighter touches. So uh, if you are going in person and you have the opportunity to look at Scott's renderings, uh, I would say feel free to take a look at how the colors he chose really do reflect a lot of the paintings that are also on display in reproduction. Uh, another designer, Joe Cirqua, our composer and sound designer, really began his process by looking at the paintings in the script. Then he also listened to music of the time. This piece, he said, is filled with so much beauty and pain. Her paintings were really filled with so much beauty and pain. So I created the Joe Cirqua version of that beauty and pain. You'll hear uh, some instrumentation that runs the gamut from violins to cellos, flutes, Baroque guitar, harpsichord, and more. A bit about our acting team. Claire Hayden plays Artemisia as an adult. Claire, a member of the advisory company at Ford, also played Henrietta Swan Levitt in our production of Silent Sky. So this is her second Lauren Gunderson play for Ford. Here's a little bit of an inside scoop. As Lauren was writing Artemisia, Jen recalls uh, that she remarked that the role might be a good one for Claire. As ever, great minds. Jen was already thinking about that match. James DeVita a long-standing company member at APT, returns to the forward stage as Orazio Gentileschi, Artemisia's father. Long-standing audiences may recall that Jim played another painter, abstract, abstract expressionist Mark Rothko in Red here in 2014. The director of Red, Laura Gordon, also a member of the Ford family as both director and actor. Uh, you can, if you're in the rotunda, see an image from her turn in Good People, dives into multiple figures in Artemisia's life. Daniel Molina, who would have been seen in our region in APT's Taming of the Shrew, makes his debut with Ford with Artemisia. He's traveled extensively, spending several seasons with the Oregon and Utah Shakespeare festivals. Finally, returning to Madison from a recent move to Los Angeles is Madison Uphoff. Maddie too makes her main stage debut at Ford with this production after having worked on the reading of her play last year, though she's been seen on Madison stages before, in fact, in the Playhouse in productions with uh, CTM, the Madison Opera, Four Seasons, and more. She also appeared in Forward's last monologue festival, Within These Walls. She too plays multiple roles, most notably as Artemisia as a teenager. I'd like to provide one more glimpse into the rehearsal hall and mention one last member of the team. Samantha Martinson. As I mentioned before, uh, she was our assistant director. Twice a season, Forward makes it a habit, uh, has started making it a habit to bring on an assistant director with the intent to cultivate their emergent work as a director in Wisconsin. For Artemisia, Samantha joined the team. She's an artist based in Milwaukee at present. Among her responsibilities were serving as a second eye for Jen, discerning what Jen was looking for in rehearsal and reflecting upon it, researching and providing images of paintings to the design team to craft projections for our transitions. So yes, indeed, you'll see glimpses of Artemisia's work within the play itself. And tracking finally also what Jen sought from scene to scene to discuss or follow up in conversation. She noted coming out of rehearsals that the hallmark of the rehearsal hall atmosphere at Forward is that there's a space for everyone to be a collaborator in the room. The team ranges from an early career professional to a company member at APT, from those who have been with Forward from the beginning to those making their debut on this process, but all are welcomed into the room as equal collaborators. Samantha reflected that as an emergent director, this viewpoint set the stage for her to grow. Jen and Samantha met early on when Jen was working on the script. Uh, Samantha was also a part of the production meetings with designers and she was privy to Jen's individual research, vision for designers, communication styles with each member of the team. 
a little bit now about the structure of the play or the story of the play. I recall uh, hearing the play and thinking that this line struck me and stood out to me, that the world cannot get enough of women in danger, but also that women need women. This play is in three parts, though there is no intermission. Lauren sees it, Samantha shared, generally as three acts of Artemisia's life. Young Artemisia and her story, a transition to her midlife, and a final transition to her when she and her father are much older. The examination of the third act reflects a question of, once you're so accomplished, what do you accomplish? First, you get to witness who she is as a young adult, her grit, her fire, her determination. She knows she's going to be amazing, but just needs to do it. The second chapter is her becoming what she always thought she could be. And the third is really about reconciling what others have thought of her and of what she thinks of herself. So as an overview, really, what does it mean to be an artist? Questions that arise and have arisen can people separate themselves from their art? Do people view artists apart from or in conjunction with their art? Is that even possible? A lot of people do view artists apart. Other artists, no matter what they do in their lives, are viewed apart from their art. No one thinks about who they are as a person. No one necessarily thinks about all of the historical or personal elements that make up who they are, anyone from Caravaggio to da Vinci. But there existed and exists a double standard with Artemisia and, dare I say, often women in general, in which their life events are inextricably woven into consideration of their work. Caravaggio's mentioned um, in regards to this specifically too. So I invite you to consider those questions for yourself as you journey through the play, as you journey through Artemisia's own life. Uh, in conclusion, that uh, American theater most produced playwright lists, as I mentioned, does exclude Shakespeare, the other most produced playwright in America, because he'd throw the curve. That he'd otherwise be on the list is evocative, though, to me, as he wrote many father-daughter plays near the end of his career. Though Lauren is still on an astronomical rise in her own notoriety, Lauren's offering to this theme comes at a time when I think we're all seeking to learn to live and be with one another for who we are. Here's to that search and the search for what it means to be true and to find truth in art. Here, last, is to a continual unfolding of the work of the great artist celebrated in this play. Enjoy our world premiere of Lauren Gunderson's Artemisia.